What's up guys? No competitive analysis this week because we actually have bigger fish to fry. This past weekend was the May International Challenge, an annual event that would normally be used as a way for VGC competitors to earn championship points from the comfort of their homes. But this year is different. Due to the global pandemic, the Pokemon Company International decided they would hold sort of a pseudo world championships known as the Players Cup. This will consist of four major online events. Starting from the top, the final event is a tournament with four players from North America, four players from Europe, four players from Latin America, three players from Oceania, and one special invite player. The players from each region qualify via a 256 double elimination tournament, except Oceania, whose tournament is only 128 players. The special invite player qualifies via a special invite tournament consisting of top players from around the world. To qualify for the 256 player tournament, you had to compete in the May International Challenge. That's where the issues start. This format has gotten a lot of flack for various things, whether it be the broken Dynamax mechanic or the viability of strategies that people would call degenerate, but many people, myself included, found this to be a great best of three format. While best of one letters can make the outcome of a game feel entirely out of your control sometimes, this format undoubtedly rewards people who play best of three effectively. This is a game of information after all. Getting caught off guard by something game one allows you to adjust for the rest of the series and play more effectively. All the problems within the format, however, become much more apparent when there are no longer best of three events. This May International Challenge was a huge hurdle for VGC players to overcome in order to play in the only remaining official VGC 2020 events. If you failed, you were just out of luck. Today I'll be discussing aspects of this format that are in a lot of cases completely unacceptable for a competitive game. Don't get me wrong, I love this game, I've been playing it for years and the effect it's had on my life is incredible. But Best of One VGC 2020 has to be one of the worst formats I've ever played. And I'm not making this as a salt post because I know I didn't qualify. I wanted to discuss these points for a while, but decided to wait until the season was over to give my retrospective on it. I know this video is going to be pretty negative, but it comes from a genuine love for this game. So let's start with something positive. This week's art contest winner is Whale Sharks, who made a great depiction of what using Venusaur to counter Sun is like. It gave me a good laugh, and if you want to enter this week's art contest, you just have to join the Discord linked in the description and submit your art to the art contest channel. This week's challenge is to make art about the craziest thing you saw in the IC. Personally, the craziest thing I've seen in the IC was three separate teams, all with Toxapex on them. I, I don't know how I ran into all three of them, but it was weird. Leave a like to support the channel. Last week we had over 300 likes, so let's shoot for that this week, but let's get into it. I'm going to start off this video with my biggest gripe about this format and the root of most of the issues that we're going to face, Dynamax. That's right, the worst D word YouTube won't demonetize me for using. For those of you who are living under a rock, like everything Rhyperior faces, Dynamax is a mechanic that takes one of your Pokemon and doubles its HP for three turns. During this time it cannot be forced out, it cannot be flinched, and its moves are powered up to super powerful versions of themselves with bonus effects depending on the type of the move. Some moves boost stats like speed or attack, while others lower opponent stats confuse them or set up battlefield effects. These moves also bypass regular protect, and the only way to completely negate their effects and damage is to either switch into an immunity or use one of your valuable Dynamax turns to use max guard. Imagine Z moves from Pokemon Sun and Moon, but stronger, and you can use them multiple times without needing an item. The only thing balancing this mechanic is the fact that both players can do it. It's like giving two boxers a handheld nuke and saying it's a skill based fight because they both have the option to use it. And I can already hear the comments saying get good, but trust me, I've had that mentality with games in the past, I'm very anti-ban when it comes to balancing things, and I enjoy the challenge of adjusting to the metagame and improving from it. But Dynamax is a really strange situation. While the concept of Dynamax seems to be the worst thing in this format, it's the consequences of Dynamax existing that take this format and bring it lower than it could have been before. Arguably the worst consequence of Dynamax is the increase in usage of sleep and paralysis status moves. As you'd imagine, you wouldn't want the other player to be able to throw three turns of powerful moves onto your side of the field, so you need to do whatever it takes to stop it. Whatever it takes. Sleep is probably your first choice, so let's go with the most reliable sleep move in the game, Spore. Okay, so let's find every Spore user in the format and pick the best one. Wait a second, there's only one, and it's Toad from Steven Universe. No worries, you don't need to choose that garbage Pokemon, there are plenty of other reliable sleep moves like Yawn, except that takes two turns and they'd still probably be able to throw at least two moves your way. Okay, so what's your next best option? Sleep Powder, a 75% accurate move. You're essentially putting the whole outcome of a match on a dice roll. Granted, the odds are in your favor, but if you were told that there was only a 75% chance you wouldn't get hit by a steamroller today on your way to work, you definitely wouldn't leave your house. Oh, and hey, Milotic is good. It gets hypnosis too. Maybe I could run that. It's only 60% accurate, but I'm sure it's bulky enough that if it doesn't land the first time, I could always try again. 
That, or I could run a coil set that brings my chance of hitting up to about 80. Still a dice roll, but better. Do you see a running theme here? One of the best counters to Dynamax is an RNG-based strategy that more and more players find themselves running for a chance to defend against a powerful Dynamax Pokemon. Defensive switches into anything other than a full immunity will result in your Pokemon getting hit for way too much damage in most cases. Even if the hit is resisted, it's still usually a 130 base power move that has some sort of secondary effect to it, usually resulting in you feeling like a deer cornered by three wolves named Max, Rock, and Fall respectively. Even if your Pokemon survives the hit, you'll probably find yourself in a disadvantageous position because of the secondary effect of the move. If you want me to go deeper into why sleep is busted, please refer to my video on the main offender, Venusaur. I also have a video explaining why Max Airstream is the most broken move in the game if you have time for that, but in general, relying on a 60% chance to stop a Dynamax Pokemon with sleep, or the 30% chance for them to get paralyzed takes control of the situation out of both players' hands, making one player feel lucky that they got out of the situation with their Pokemon intact, and the other player feeling entirely robbed in some cases. Another consequence of Dynamax is the spamming of the item weakness policy. In previous formats, where you couldn't instantly double your Pokemon's health for some reason, you had to play weakness policy Pokemon extremely cautiously. By snarling, intimidating, burning, or any other defensive measure, you could reach a point where your weakness policy Pokemon could take a super effective hit and survive it to deal out massive damage to the other side of the field. But Dynamax takes away the need for careful play with weakness policy Pokemon. When the HP is doubled and the Pokemon can survive just about any hit, everything is a potential weakness policy user. Dragapult, Excadrill, Togekiss, Arcanine, I've even seen weakness policy Wartortle, and no, I don't want to talk about it. The fact that weakness policy can be run on just about every Pokemon bar Shed Ninja makes VGC 2020 infinitely worse than it could have otherwise been. You can be punished for making a good play. Rock sliding into a Togekiss makes sense, but you always have to consider the possibility that hitting this Pokemon with a super effective move could cost you the entire game. That's pretty unacceptable in my opinion. You should be able to pick out which Pokemon is capable of reliably running the weakness policy item. Without Dynamax, I could tell you where the weakness policy might be on this team if it exists. But with Dynamax, here are all the places it might be. In best of three, I could tolerate this. I'd find a weakness policy game one and be careful not to proc it game two or three. But in best of one, the match is essentially over once you fall for it. This has to be one of the worst best of one metas I've ever played. And where most of my frustration comes from is the place of love for this game. I'm genuinely upset that I and plenty of other players can no longer compete in official competitions for this format, because I really love this format when it comes to best of three. I think when playing best of three, the better player is going to come out on top at least 90% of the time. I'm sure there's a lot more wrong with this format, and trust me, plenty of people have given their two cents on why this is a bad format, and I waited a long time to get mine. I'd complain about Ally Switch and other annoying aspects of the format, but I wanted to keep my complaints to things exclusively found in VGC 2020. I want to give a shout out to Edu for his video in particular on why Dynamax is a bad mechanic. I think he did a great job breaking it down, so I'll leave the link to his video in the description. And I want to close out this video with a segment I recorded with my team building partner Yoku, where we go over our experience in the May IC. I'll just be highlighting a few parts of this, but you can see the whole uncut video on oh his my, channel. Like, I had never seen this many skull Dragapult before in my life. You know what was the worst thing I saw? Like, like the thing that I didn't expect to see that I saw four freaking times. Please tell me it was Weakness Policy Corviknight. It wasn't. It wasn't Weakness Policy Corviknight. That's slightly understandable. I saw literally stall teams four times in this IC, and all of them had Toxapex. <laughs> I like oh you. What you said, Pex? Oh, that's right. I saw your stream for it. Yeah, yeah. Ah. So the first one I caught on stream, and then the rest of them, I was like, Morning, listen, because at sixteen forty nine, if I if I at least win ten of my matches, I should be around seventeen hundred. I'm okay. No, not at all. I lost four matches consecutively. That's this this morning is where I figured out Skull Dragapult was a thing. It had fake tears next to it. I was like, I my can't stop that it. Isn't the fact that sleep's broken? It's the fact that. A mechanic of the game built around being high risk, high reward, shouldn't be this good. We shouldn't have games come down to 75% accurate, 60% accurate moves. There are so many games where me and my opponent, our optimal play, turn one, was to blind Spam hypnosis. hypnosis. <laughs> it was literally, yeah. <laughs> there was no defensive switch we should make, there was no offensive play we should make, it was put the other thing to sleep. With that, I want to close out this video by saying that this format was a lot of fun when we had in-person best of three events. If you want to continue practicing best of three tournaments, my friends over at the Mount Silver Discord have you covered. They host multiple best of three tournaments at different times of the day every week. The link to their Discord will be in the description as well as Yoku's video and Edu's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And be sure to leave your thoughts on this format in the comment section below because I honestly want to hear what you have to say about the format too. I also want to give a special thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. 
be sure to check out my Patreon page to see what extra content you can unlock for just a dollar a month. But with that, have a nice night and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.